Hello and welcome to another episode of the Dongfang Hour China Space Updates. I'm Jean Deville, joined as always by Blaine Curcio. In this episode, we discuss a retrospective research article on the rounds of funding of Chinese commercial space companies in 2021. But let's first discuss how the Chinese space station manages the risk of orbital collisions in space with space debris and how it protects its Taikonauts. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dongfang Hour. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. The Earth's orbit is littered with space debris, consisting notably of rocket upper stages and of decommissioned satellites. And this poses increasing risks for satellites in operation and perhaps even more to astronauts working on space stations in LEO. The topic has grown even hotter recently with the ASAT tests of India and Russia, respectively, in 2019 and 2021, as well as the close encounter between two Starlink satellites and the Chinese space station a couple of weeks ago, making the Chinese space station perform a number of collision avoidance maneuvers. And I think this is a good opportunity today to talk about just China's collision avoidance strategy on the Chinese space station. And this is based on various details that were revealed by Ho Yongchun last week, the deputy chief engineer of the Chinese space station systems and notably of life support systems. So the Chinese space station has a four-level approach in protecting its Taikonauts from catastrophic collisions, and which is called Fang Duo Du Tao, which can roughly be translated into protection, avoidance, repair, and escape. And the first two strategies are really, you know, fairly classical stuff um, for very small debris for micrometeorites. Basically, the Chinese space station is designed to resist the impact with notably the walls of different modules of the station being strongly reinforced. And this is called Fang. And for larger pieces of debris or for just satellites that are in a collision um, trajectory, basically the Chinese space station adopts avoidance maneuvers to change its orbit. And again, this was what was done regarding two Starlink satellites over the past couple of weeks. And this is called Duo. Now, where it gets interesting is for the two remaining points. Let's say the Chinese space station gets hit by debris, which manages to dent the space station wall and maybe punch a tiny hole into the space station and create a leak. The Chinese space station is fitted with acoustic sensors all over its walls, and it uses the acoustic waves that are emitted by the impact and by the leak to roughly locate the leak and then convey the information of this location to the Taikonauts. And then the Taikonauts use these handheld acoustic instruments to locate precisely the leak. And once that is done, they are provided with a number of patches that they basically just sort of put onto those, uh, put onto the holes. And this can, in theory, mitigate holes that are up to 20 millimeters in diameter. And this is called Du. And now in case the piece of space debris punched a hole that is too big to fix, the last solution is basically to escape, to abandon the Chinese space station. And this is called Tao. And the ISS also has similar strategies in case of a too big of an impact. And so let's imagine that that has happened. You would have the pressure that would drop significantly in the space station. And the Chinese space station is equipped with emergency pumping systems to try and bring the pressure back up. And the idea is to buy precious seconds, precious minutes for the Taikonauts to be able to rush into the Shenzhou spacecraft that's docked to the space station and close the hatch to undock and then to re-enter the atmosphere to get back to the Earth. And I think on the topic of evacuating safely Taikonauts from the space station, there's another story that's seldom discussed, and I think most people don't know about it. It's that since the Shenzhou 12 mission last year, there's always an emergency Long March 2F carrying a spare Shenzhou spacecraft at the Zhou Tran Launch Center on standby. And the idea is that if the Shenzhou spacecraft that's currently docked to the space station has some sort of malfunction or issue, um, the spare Long March 2F is there to launch and deliver an operational Shenzhou to the Taikonauts in space at any moment. I believe that the criteria is to be able to launch and deliver the Shenzhou within eight days between the time where Zhou Tran gets the message and the time where the Shenzhou is then delivered to the space station. 
And so overall, to wrap up, I'd say that debris is starting to become an increasing problem for satellites in LEO and for human spaceflight. And definitely there is a need for more regulation to keep things from worsening in the coming years. And potentially there's maybe even a need to clean up the orbit of some of the existing space waste. And actually some companies have already identified this as a commercial opportunity. Astroscale, for example, which is planning, among other things, on bringing debris removal services to the market. And we're actually seeing a similar phenomenon in China where there have been other startups. I'm thinking, for example, of a startup called Origin Space or Qiyuan Taikong, which was founded in 2019 and which is planning to develop orbital debris removal services, among other things. And they notably launched one demonstrator to do this in April 2021 called the NEO-1 satellite. And so, yeah, that's all I have on debris. And um, speaking of ambitious, dynamic startups in China, I think, Blaine, your next point is really all about that. Do you have uh, maybe any points, any thoughts on space debris before we, we move on to that? Thanks, John. Not a lot to add from my side, but a special shout out to the good folks at Astroscale. I saw some news from them this week on a refueling agreement, if I remember correctly. So congrats to them, and they're doing good work keeping orbit clean. So getting into our next piece of news for the week, we saw an article published by the Chinese company database Chichacha about Chinese commercial space funding in 2021. And so this article was published as part of a series of articles commemorating the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party and looking at different industries that have flourished under this sort of, let's say, 100 years or, or in many cases, rather more recently, like space, uh, of, of Communist Party rule. And so after this initial obligatory homage to the party, we dig into some details on the Chinese space sector. And so there's a couple of different data sets presented here. So the first one is sort of the number of different companies in the sector. And the second one is the amount of funding going into these companies in 2021. And there's a historical data set given for both. The second data set is a lot more specific to commercial space, and they give us a table at the end with all the different data points that they use so we know what they're talking about. And so again, this second data set is 2021 funding for Chinese commercial space companies. And so Chi Cha Cha during the year 2021 tracked 35 funding rounds into Chinese commercial space companies, totaling about 6.45 billion RMB or around 1 billion US dollars. And this was down a little bit from last year's absolutely huge 42 funding rounds and almost 10 billion RMB. But nonetheless, 2020 was the second best year on record in terms of both funding and in terms of funding rounds. And not only that, but it's better than the third best by a factor of like two times. It's it's still quite a good year, I think, 2021. And if we look at the average funding round size in 2021, you're looking at around 184 million RMB or about 30 million US dollars. So you're getting fairly large funding rounds uh, for these companies, many of which are early stage, which I'll talk about more in just a second. And looking at the 35 rounds in 2020, just one thing to point out that 19 of those 35 rounds are either angel or seed or series A funding round, and they account for 54% of total funding. And I think one round, the O space angel round of 400 million RMB throws off this average a little bit. But nonetheless, I think the point being, we are seeing a lot of new companies coming into the sector, even with, you know, a, a lot of companies already, like we have, you know, 20 launch companies, and yet we've seen a couple of new launch companies founded in 2021, and they have indeed raised some funding. So I think definitely interesting to note that a, a pretty big percentage of both the rounds and the funding is going towards early stage companies. And last point to note about about funding specifically is that as recently as 2013, commercial space funding in China was zero, as the article shows. And even as recently as 2015, it was about 60 million RMB uh, or about 9 million US dollars. And so the article concludes with, as I mentioned, a table of all of the funding rounds from 2021 that they're taking into account. And we're happy to say that we've reported on the majority of these funding rounds during our weekly news updates on the Dongfang Hour. But we also note that their list is not necessarily exhaustive and there may be some inconsistencies or at least some definitional uh, questions that um, that are worth taking into account when looking at the numbers. But to be fair, we always learn something new when we see these reports from uh, from Chi Cha Cha. And I think that's, I guess, one of the, the other kind of interesting points about this, uh, this story is that, as is always the case, when we see these annual reports, we, we find out about one or two or three companies 
that we had never heard of before. And 2021 was no exception. So among other companies on this list of uh, uh, this table of funding rounds that Chi Cha Cha published, uh, so we have Xiaoyan Tansuo, which is a maker of chips focused on edge computing for the space sector. Uh, we also saw Wei Dong Shikong, which is a company that is focusing on solar array drive assemblies, among other things, and also Wei Kong Dong Li, which is uh, developing Hall effect thrusters. And so all three of these companies, frankly speaking, I had not heard of them before. I think two of them were founded in 2021, although I need to double check that. But basically, we just have these new companies emerging, showing up in, in such articles. And I think that these three companies that I just mentioned are just another example of this increasing trend of subsystems level companies starting to be founded in the Chinese space sector. So I think the first several years in the space sector, the companies that were getting the most attention, the most funding, and, and indeed, probably the companies that were seeing the largest number of them being founded, um, were these kind of systems level companies. So, you know, companies building rockets, companies building satellites, you know. Um, but now we're seeing, I think, more investor interest, more investor awareness, more institutional awareness, I would say, because you have situations where, you know, the Chinese Academy of Sciences might now realize, oh, wow, this, this technology that we've been working on in, in the CAS for 20 years is now becoming a hot thing, and it's, it could be commercialized. Let's have this group of researchers go and form a startup. I think you're going to see more of this. And, and I think that the most recent example, other than these three that I just mentioned, um, was about, I think, last week or the week before on, uh, on the Dongfang Hour, we talked about the company High Star Link developing laser intersatellite links for small satellites. So again, these to watch out for in 2022. And again, we've seen uh, a few of these on this list in, in 2021. So always interesting. Uh, Jean, anything from your side on, uh, on Chinese commercial hmm. space funding? Yeah, so nothing really specific on the article, but as I was going through the list of startups that had raised funds in 2021, as you mentioned, most of them are really still quite early stage. There's a lot of seed, there's a lot of angel rounds, but it also uh, made me think that we're also seeing in 2021 some of the uh, upstream players finally starting to reach a commercialization phase, right? Um, there's been Galactic Energy that has performed successfully a second launch in 2021, and they're planning to massively uh, provide launch services in 2022 and to have some significant cash inflow. And there was also Guodian Gaoke, the IoT constellation that uh, finished the first phase of deployment of its constellation, and that is also commercializing its constellation. And we also have CGSTL that well, has started commercializing, I think, also before 2021. So seeing some of these large CapEx companies that have existed now for a couple of years starting finally to reach a phase where they're earning money, not necessarily being profitable, but having money coming in rather than living off the funds that they have been raising. For sure. No, I think it's going to be an interesting transition to see it. And I think ultimately it might even be easier for some of these subsystems level companies because they're developing one highly specific technology that they could then sell to Cask. Whereas if you're building a rocket, you know, Cask has rockets. <laughs> they don't need rockets. But if you're building a really effective laser inter-satellite link terminal, um, you know, Cask might be interested. So, yeah, I think it's an interesting uh, interesting trend to keep an eye on. Um, cool. So that being, uh, that being the case, I think that is all from us. Uh, a thank you to... Bruce Hein, I think, who bought us some more coffee since the last episode, if I'm not wrong. So thank you, Bruce. Much appreciated over at buymeacoffee.com slash Dongfang Hour. And a special shout out to our good friends at spacewatch.global and gotaikonauts, two great sources of space industry news. And I think that is about it. If you like what you have heard or seen, be sure to like or comment, leave a review, and check out the newsletter if you have not done so already. It is chock full of additional uh, Chinese space industry news. And so, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, that's all from my side. Thank you and see you next week. John, all good. Thank you and see you next week. Cool. Have a good week. Thank you. Wow. Oh my God. Great timing. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely nailed it. I was, I was watching on my screen the little battery icon in the top window. I'm like, it, it's it's it, battery is because I, for, I forgot to charge it going into this week so that that's good to know though the battery